Well, good morning and welcome to another online service. Hopefully, loads of people will be joining in on this. Methodists and others in Cumbria and beyond uh, will be worshipping you using this resource at home today, uh, or perhaps, perhaps on a different day. Today, we're confirming that wherever we are and whatever we're doing at whatever time, nothing can ever separate us from God's love. And we're going to start with our first hymn. It's um, Come Let Us Sing of a Wonderful Love, Tender and True, Out of the Heart of the Father Above, Singing to Me and to You, Wonderful Love. Almighty and ever-loving God and our Heavenly Father, we've come to worship you again today, to feel your presence near to us, within us, helping us, sharing our feelings, our fears, our joys, our highs and our lows. We want to feel near to you I want you to be a real part of us. God, our Father, help us to feel this now. God, we come before you with praise and adoration on our lips and in our hearts, acknowledging you as the source of all things, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, all-powerful, eternal, from everlasting to everlasting. God, our Father, we adore you. But God, we know we're not worthy to be in your presence. You've made us a little lower than the angels and asked us to follow your way, the way you gradually revealed to the Hebrew people over many generations and then showed us most perfectly in the life of Jesus. God, we love you, and we have followed falteringly. 
with many stumbles. Some through our own weakness. Some because of being selfish. And some without even knowing it, hurting and defending other people along the way, as well as you. Please forgive us, God our Father, for all these times. Cleanse our hearts and minds and put a right spirit within us and a desire to follow the way which Jesus set out more faithfully from this moment on. And God, we've also come to thank you when instead of rushing around on trivial things, when we stop and are quiet and think for a moment, then our hearts can overflow with thanks for you. For all that's been given to us, showered on us, for this amazing world in which you've enabled us to live. Our hearts overflow with thanks for all of it. We are most amazingly and wonderfully made in ways which still astound, astound the best medical brains. And this beautiful and bountiful world is teeming with rich resources to give us good lives. Thank you for giving us brains to use these resources and develop the incredible technology which we're now using to communicate with each other in these unusual times. Thank you, God, for your revelation to us through the prophets of old, and most of all, through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour. In his name, we ask all of our prayers. Amen. Now let's join in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This reading is taken from Romans 8, verses 26 to 39. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine, nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for i am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And just two verses from Matthew chapter 13, 31 and 32, the parable of the mustard seed. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Amen. One of the lectionary readings for today, the last part of Romans chapter 8, is my favourite. Years ago in a Sunday school class in Thornhill, I asked the young teenagers to write down a summary of this passage. One girl put down, nothing can separate us from the love of God. That's it in a nutshell. That's the kernel of the whole Christian faith. One of the key words, nothing, nothing can separate us from his love. Not wars, we know that from experience. And now, not COVID-19, not racist marches and violence, not atheism and apathy. I want to expand that key sentence, add to it. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And shown over and over again in countless situations every day by Christians and non-Christians. Nothing. Now, not COVID-19. This is a new world for us. A world we could never have imagined. Linda and I have done our bit, we've kept apart, and that's been relatively easy. Some people, NHS workers, effectively going towards the danger, putting themselves at risk and their families to help others whom they didn't know and had never met. They, knowingly or not, are showing the love of Christ to others. It reminds me of the 9-11 attack on the Twin Towers in New York. Uh, we saw firefighters rushing towards those stricken buildings, rushing towards the danger, rushing to help others. For some, it was their last journey alive. Also, the terrorist incident in Reading last month. I know at least one person rushed towards the incident to help, took off his shirt and used his shirt to stem the blood of a victim. In this COVID-19 crisis, lots of emergency workers and others vital to the economy, food suppliers and transporters, grocery retailers, all of them have been exposing themselves to extra risk to help others, to help us. In these last few months, we've seen lots of acts of love, of care for others, of thinking for others. We, Linda and I, we've been helped by lots of other people, by the love and care shown to us. COVID-19 can't separate us from the love of God. Neither can racism, racist marches and violence cannot separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. I think that's been a terrible situation, the racists. It's like a powder keg waiting to explode, and now it has done. Some very angry people, and there's certainly been mistreatment and equality. Some of it's genuine and some of it might have just been perception, but it's real very real to the people involved. I saw on television uh, an account 
of um, a sheriff in America when these um, violent marches were going on in some of the American states. And this sheriff in the state, he was summoned to go to the scene of this march. And he was thinking, confrontation, I'll stop them as usual. And then he thought, I'm fed up with this confrontation. So when he got there, he went to the front of the crowd and he asked them, what do you want me to do? They said, walk with us. And he did. He crossed the barrier. He walked with the marchers. He empathized with them. And they were amazed. They were quiet. They couldn't believe it. Some were crying. And since then, in that state, in that situation, it's been peaceful. They know, the marchers know, the people who've been mistreated know that they have been listened to. The sheriff showed that he cared. There was also a radio program, a professor of crowd behavior was on talking about football crowds. And um, these crowds are often infiltrated with people who are just set, setting out to cause violence, wanting to cause trouble. The normal solution is to send in the heavies and pull them out. But that seems to make the crowd behavior worse because they feel they've been got at. And this chap was saying, different approach. Send in plainclothes pl policemen to walk with the crowd, to talk with the crowd, to understand them, understand their problems, and be with them, gain their confidence. And together, they can approach the troubleshooting. And that has seemed to work. It's all turning their spears into plowshares. We often hear, and it can be children, you do not understand. Often the complaints from so many, from children to their parents, from protesters to the authorities. What is a, an aside? Imagine heaven in Old Testament times. Imagine a conversation from God saying, why are they behaving like that, those people? Jesus, go down and see. Jesus went, came down to earth, went with them, walked with them, people like us, ate with them, got to know them, understood their situation. The sheriff also did that. And Boris Johnson unwittingly did that. Now he knows what it's like. Nothing can separate us. Not COVID, not racist marches and violence. Thirdly, not atheism, apathy, modernism, secular society, Richard Dawkins, ignorance, post-Christian society. None of that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Our churches are often ignored now. People can regard us church members as a bit odd. You say, imagine going to church every Sunday. They say, I go sometimes, generally to funerals. You get a good funeral in a church, it's appropriate. Also to christenings, give the baby a good start in life, great family occasion. In fact, sometimes if non-church people come into our churches, we are surprised and we hardly know what to do with them. Our church services, our church language is often foreign to those outside. It's a sort of us and them situation. They're all at sea. They don't know what to do. Stand up, sit down, don't understand what's going on. I don't know if you remember the comedian Dave Allen I remember one thing he said, said talked about this, this Catholic girl uh, was taking her boyfriend to church. And they went in and they were standing up and they were sitting down and they were kneeling. And, um, and at one point he was sort of half up, half down with his hand about his knee. And she says to him, are your flies open? He said, no, should they be? 
<laughs> terrible. Uh, it's just awkward for people uh, in a church situation. They hear lots of strange words. And it's worse if they start sharing the peace or communion or sharing the grace. But Christ died for them too. Nothing can separate them from the love of God in Christ Jesus. But they know nothing of it. They don't know what we're talking about. And so often we're not that good at explaining. These days, our form of worship can be great for us, really inspire us and energize us and fill us for the coming week. But it can be quite negative for the man or woman who just comes in off the street. It's this kind of situation that Richard Dawkins sees as Christianity, and he decries it, and he opposes it. And all the more so if we are dogmatic that our way is the only true way, and everything else is false. I've heard senior Christians, clergy and bishops, saying, I don't believe in the God that Richard Dawkins doesn't believe in. Our faith is more than that. But we owe a lot to Richard Dawkins and people like him. That is much better than so many people outside the church who just don't care. They're apathetic. They just let us do our own thing because that's the strange thing that keeps us happy. Jesus said, go into all the world and tell people about me. Acts chapter 2. Everybody heard them speaking in their own language and many were converted. We might ask, how can they respond if they have never heard? We say we preach the gospel every week, but they don't hear because we are speaking a foreign language. We have to be like the disciples in Acts, speak in the language of the people in the streets today. How do we do that? Well, basically, I don't know. For in the main, we don't know their language, their culture, their comfort, comfortable zones, pubs and clubs. We are trying different forms of worship, and that's good, and let's continue and keep trying in other ways not yet discovered. And we've learned new ways of communicating from this lockdown and experimented more than ever we thought we could. And I know from my Sellafield chaplaincy that outsiders still have a great respect for the church and for Christians trying to live out the gospel in their daily living, as Jesus did. People look at our lives and watch us very carefully, maybe sometimes wondering if we'll slip up. And they respect the lives that we try to lead, even if they don't feel like following themselves. And then we read the parable of the mustard seed. We were like those seeds, but those seeds in us have now germinated and grown and must never stop growing, for we need our lives to be shining beacons of love, of the love that was in Christ Jesus, showing that love through everything we do. We need to let people know that this is our life because we are Christian. Not Christian in a holy and religious way, but in a Christian living way, living for others. We need to be like the sheriff in USA, walking with the people, understanding the people, learning what makes them tick, because often we don't know that. Doing that every moment of our lives and developing relations so that they know that we are there for them and that God loves them too. Doing that in a way that they will feel if they need help or want to come to us, that we are there for them. They can come to us. I've spoken critically of the church services as methods of showing Christ to people. But our churches, our faith, our fellowship is so important. 
want to give you an example. Ricky Valens died recently, pop star in the late 1960s, and there, that's an obituary about him in the Times. Uh, he had only one hit, and if you're old enough, you might remember it. It was, tell Laura I love her. Later than that, he suffered depression for quite a long time. And on the golf course one day, his playing partner said to him, do you love the Lord? Now, we don't seem to say that. Now, that was in the 1960s. But that chap, he took Ricky to his local church. And Ricky said, there I experienced an outpouring of love and acceptance that I hadn't felt for years. The love of God shown in Christ Jesus, shown through the people that Ricky met in that church. There's lots of love in our churches. When people come in, they find it, they feel it. We know it from our own church. This is the power of our faith. The love of God shown in Christ Jesus and shown in our churches, in the people. This is the love we're talking about. The love by which we strive to live each day, hopefully making others think, I want that love in my life and be attracted. In Christ's name, this is our prayer. Amen. And now let's sing, um, it's hymns in Psalm 6, 8, 7, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. to the time when we pray for others and ourselves. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we come now expressing our concerns for some of the situations and the people in this world. A world with so much beauty and goodness, yet with many problems. 
Lord, we pray for trouble spots in the world where there is unrest and fighting and misunderstanding between nations and cultures. We pray for all of those affected in any way. We pray especially for those in the greatest need, without shelter or food or safety, always anxious, worried. God, we pray for their leaders, that they may always seek peace and not war, that they may be just and not corrupt, that they may think of the good of their people above all else. They may guide their nation towards better and more peaceful times. God be with all people in authority and with responsibility in our own land, in government, in industry, in commerce, in welfare and health, in our churches and in all faiths. May we try to understand how difficult it must be getting to grips with difficult and controversial situations, having to make critical decisions when the correct way is not at all obvious. Be with them, Father. Give them wisdom and guidance and the courage to make and carry through the best decisions. We pray for all those who care for others professionally and voluntarily. Doctors and nurses, care workers, social workers, and volunteers in every sector. And thank you for their dedication for others, especially in these recent months. God, we pray for those who've been treated unfairly, who feel second-class citizens, whom society is prejudiced against. Help all of us to search our hearts for any prejudices that we may have and do our best to cast them out. Let us pray for the sick and suffering from whatever causes. Help those in distress to feel your comforting presence surrounding them with love. Father, be with all who are grieving over the loss of someone very dear to them. We know that bereavement goes on for a very long time, even forever. Help us to be aware of such situations and do anything and everything we can to help to ease the pain of loss. Lord, we bring before you the Christian church throughout the world, in this country, this county, our Methodist church in Britain, all our ministers and lay workers. God, renew and inspire your church for this new age, this 21st century with this amazing technology. Enable the church in each one of us to make the church and make our faith in Christ alive, attractive and relevant to people in every walk of life and every situation. Reinforce our whole being with the knowledge that absolutely nothing can separate us from your love in Christ, in whose name we ask all of our prayers. Amen. And now to our final hymn, confirming that. It's best of all, God is with us. God will hold and never fail. Keep that truth when storms are raging. God remains through faith is frail.
And now may God's blessing surround us each day as we trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within guard and keep us from sin. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love. Amen.